Welcome dear viewer to a brand new program coming to you from Baraton TV here and hereafter. What is our new program? The new program is titled What the Bible Says. What does the Bible say about your life, about my life, about the things that are around us? What the Bible says. This is what we are going to focus on. So this is brand new coming to you from Baraton TV here and here after. And so this is the time where quickly before you forget, you go there and say, did I subscribe? Oh no, I forgot. Click subscribe. This is where you say, hey, did I like this? I forgot. Thumbs up, you like it. And this is where you remember, oh, there's a friend who needs to know about this. You click that arrow that says share, pop, and there you share it on all platforms of social media, and that way you will have done the right thing. So, what the Bible says. And so, before we delve into this wonderful program that will be running for many days to come, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity to study the Bible, to know what the Bible says. Bless us, speak to us, take over our minds, convince us, convict us, and may your will be done. And we pray that your word will be clear, understood, and accepted in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we want to look at what the Bible says about the Bible. But in every episode that will come, we'll be looking at what the Bible says about this, about that, about something else. But today, what the Bible says about the Bible, what the Bible says about itself. 2 Timothy chapter 3 Verse 16, the Bible says, all scripture, referring to itself, the Bible is talking about itself, all scripture is breathed out by God, that all scripture is a product of the breath of God. Another version says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. What do we mean by that portion of that text? What we mean is that the scripture came because God influenced the writers. Human beings, approximately 40 of them, over an approximate period of 1,500 years, different times never met some of them, sat down and wrote under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so Moses writing the book of Job and the first five books of the Bible writes there and you find that what he writes is in congruence with other parts of the Bible. And you say, wow, how comes? In which conference did they meet? Did they go to Berlin for a congress? Did they sit in some luxurious hotel to write? No. Each one was writing at their own time. David, the psalmist, wrote in his own time. His son Solomon wrote in his own time. And here we find other fishermen like John and Peter writing after they had spent time with Jesus. And all of them, when you bring together, you say, this scripture is the word of God. Why is it the word of God? Because the writing was influenced by the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. And so when we hold the Bible, we say that the scripture is the word of God. And that's why the Bible says all scripture, not some of it, not a portion of it, is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That means that when we have the Bible, the Bible is not just supposed to comfort us because we are jobless or comfort us because we are suffering socially or suffering economically. No, the Bible is supposed to teach us what we are supposed to do. The Bible is supposed to reproof us and say, hey, you are wrong. What you are doing is not right. The Bible is supposed to correct us and tell us you are supposed to do this and not that. That's the purpose of the Bible. And then for training in righteousness. Dear viewer, the Bible says about itself that the entire Bible is inspired by God. What that means is that the message comes from God. The message may be expressed in human language, but the message is still the message from God. When a parent sends a child and says, hey, can you tell your sister to come? The child will go and express it in the childlike language, but it is still the message from the parent. 
When the same parent sends an older child, the older child will express the same message as an older child, but it remains the message of the parent. While the messenger may use their own limitation and learning, those who are educated presented it like educated people. Those who are fishermen without much education presented it as such, but the honor of the message remains the same. That's why we say the Bible is the word of God. Why is the Bible the word of God? Because the message is given by God. The writers may be different. They may not be all thinking alike or same level of education. They may have some shortfall here and shortfall there, but the message they deliver is the message of God. And so when we look at the Bible, we say the Bible is the word of God. This belief, friends, contradicts everyone and every teaching that proposes that a section of the Bible is obsolete and no longer necessary. There are people in our world today who don't agree with the entire Bible. They look at the Bible and say, yeah, yeah, yeah no, that section we think is obsolete. Oh, that section is not necessary. That is not consistent with Scripture. And this is part of the reason why this program comes to you, dear viewer. So that if there is any false notion that is going around there, we kick it out in the name of Jesus by looking at what the Bible says. This program is titled, What the Bible Says. You see, some people think that the Old Testament is no longer relevant to believers and that they, they only wish to limit themselves to the New Testament. They say, oh, no, 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 no. We are New Testament people. We are now under grace. The issues of the Old Testament are done. Listen. We want to assist you. When the Bible says all scripture, which part of all don't you understand? All. You know the meaning of all? All. When the Bible says all, then you say Old Testament out. What didn't you understand when it said all? We affirm that the Bible says that the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, remain to be the relevant, inspired word of God that we as believers must adhere to. The entire Bible. We should not reject the parts of the Bible that oppose our lifestyle. Just because you have been believing too much in faith, and now you don't believe that you must have some good works in your life. You say, oh, no, 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 no. The book of James, you see the book of James says faith without works is dead. Then you start saying, no, the book of James may not be a very good book in the Bible. So you start reducing and dropping them out. You don't read this. You don't read that because it opposes your lifestyle. No, we should instead change our lifestyle and not attempt to change the Bible. Our lifestyle must be consistent with what the Bible says. This program is titled, What the Bible Says. And I believe you will enjoy as we look at what the Bible says. Today, we are looking at what the Bible says about itself. And the first and most important thing the Bible is saying about itself to you and to me is that the entire Bible is the Word of God. And so what do we mean by the entire Bible? Old and New Testament. You see, at the time of writing, friends, the only available word of God at that time was the Old Testament. When Jesus came, what was the scripture that was available? It was the Old Testament. So how do you dismiss what Jesus and the apostles read? At the time of writing, the New Testament was being developed. And as it was being developed, the apostle writes and says, all scripture, the one under development and the one that we are using is given by inspiration of God. Jesus and the apostles continuously quoted the Old Testament as an authoritative source of teachings for believers. So you cannot ignore the Old Testament, neither can you ignore the New Testament. Now, in the story of development of the Bible, many people wrote the Bible and there are so many books that have been written and some will continue being discovered. But as the church was growing, the church started collecting portions of books that they would hold together and say that this is what we agree with. Why? Because there were so many stories going around. And so believers started discarding certain books because of certain problems. Two problems. Number one, any book that the authorship was suspicious. For example, a book that claims to have been written by Apostle Peter, but it originated from Egypt, 
could not be from Peter. And so that became suspicious and it was thrown out. A book where the stories were inconsistent with what was known, a book that had certain contradictions, authorship issues was thrown out. And so in collecting those books, the Christian church came up with 66 books that are called technically the canon, the canon, 66 books. And this is what we say, the Bible refers to this as all scripture is God given. Now you'll find other Bibles which are written deutrocanonical or extra canonical. You know, these are the Bibles that have more than 66 books because some people embrace some of the books that were rejected from the canon. And sometimes they will go into up to 78. But as believers, as Protestants, we believe that the 66 books are the given word of God because there has been no question about the authorship and the content of those books. Listen, dear viewer, four things. The entire Bible, Old and New Testament, is the inspired word of God. The Bible is our only rule of faith. We have no other rule of faith. We only use the Bible. And so even if our church leaders gathered and prayed for all nights for one week and came up with an issue as a conclusion, but it contradicts the Bible. We will throw them with their issue and their gowns and their meters and their capes out and we'll stick with the Bible. Because the Bible is our only rule of faith. Nobody is so holy enough to contradict the Bible. Nobody is so close to God to contradict what God says because God doesn't make mistakes to reverse his own word. So the Bible is our only rule of faith. Anything outside the Bible we don't take, we won't take, we won't accept. It doesn't matter who you are. Even if you perform miracles, you can declare a miracle and the world turns upside down, but we'll stick with the Bible. The basis of our beliefs and teachings and way of life is the Bible. The Bible teachings change us and distinguish us from the world. And so because of our adherence to the Bible, we are changed and we become different from the world because we read the Bible. And so, friends, today we just said, let's begin this program of what the Bible says. And today we are focused on what the Bible says about the Bible. What the Bible says is what is expected of us by God. We need to know what the Bible says about everything around us. And that's why we want to invite you to follow us as we develop this program over time, as we go on and on, so that God will be glorified through us. We need to adhere to what the Bible says. We need to know what the Bible says. Join us in the journey of what the Bible says. Coming to you from where? Baraton TV. Here and hereafter. Thank you, dear viewer, and may the Lord bless you. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for beginning this journey with us as we go through the Bible to know what the Bible says. Speak to us yourself and bless that viewer. It is possible today that as we look at what the Bible says, there could be burdens and challenges that our viewer is going through. We pray that in the name of Jesus, bless him, bless her, have mercy and answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.